People talk a lot about their earliest memories, and to be completely honest with you, my earliest memory is when my mom asked me to tell one of her friends how old I was, you know, and your mom's like, tell, you know, tell them how old you are. And I, I very vividly remember, you know, being like, I'm three. But I would say that my second earliest memory is me sitting in a restaurant in a booster seat with a purple Game Boy color in my hand. Now, that Game Boy and the game inside, Pokemon Crystal, are long gone. I probably left it under the seat of the school bus, or maybe I traded it for $7 at GameStop. I was too young to remember when or how, but at some point I got my tiny little hands on a copy of Pokemon Fire Red, and I played that thing to death. I had this Onyx, and I named it Jason, but I didn't know that it was a girl because I didn't know the difference between the male and female symbols, but I didn't care, man. I was just having a blast with Jason. Since then, I've owned every single game. I've gone to every single day of release and every single midnight premiere into adulthood. And I say all of this to say that I've had Pokemon in my hands for as long as I can remember. And with 24 years of Pokemon under my belt, I'm here to say that it's all a lie. The only thing that waits for you at the end of these Pokemon games is just disappointment. I've never completed a Pokemon game, and because of that, I'm forever incomplete. So it's important to know the difference between beating and completing a Pokemon game. Now, to beat a Pokemon game, you have to become the champion. This means that you and your team of monsters beat everyone else's team of monsters and you become the best. Pretty easy. But to actually complete a Pokemon game, there is so, so much more. After becoming a champion, the second step to beating a Pokemon game is completing what is called the Regional Pokedex. This means catching one of every Pokemon that's in the game. It's usually around like 175, maybe 200 Pokemon. Not that bad, but you need to know that each game has two versions and sometimes three and sometimes four different versions and this is an issue because of Pokemon trading, a feature where Pokemon can be traded from one game to another. Why is that a problem, you ask? Well, some Pokemon are only available in one of the versions. For example, if you had a copy of Pokemon Soul Silver, then you could catch a Ninetales, but you couldn't catch an Arcanine. Now, if your friend had a copy of Pokemon Heart Gold, they could catch an Arcanine, but they could not catch a Ninetales, and the only way to get that Arcanine into your Pokemon Soul Silver game and to add it to your regional Pokedex would be to trade it with your friend who had a copy of Pokemon Heart Gold. And if that isn't annoying enough, there's more. What makes trading worse is something called trade evolutions. Let me explain. Some Pokemon evolve into stronger versions of themselves the more that you train them or level them up. For example, a Squirtle will evolve into a War Turtle at level 16 and then that War Turtle to a Blastoise at level 36. But some Pokemon, no matter how much you trade them, won't evolve unless you trade them to another game first for some reason. Basically, an Abra turns into a Kadabra at level 16. But that Kadabra will not evolve into an Alakazam until you trade that Kadabra to a friend it will evolve into Alakazam and then you trade it back. This is the case for several Pokemon and why this feature is in the game at all is beyond me. Truly there's nothing worse than being a kid and looking at all the new Pokemon in the game and seeing one that you really want and then you realize that it's a trade evolution and you'll never get it. So you need all of the Pokemon in both versions if you're going to complete the region of Pokedex. So without anyone to trade with, this means that the only way to complete the regional decks would be to have both versions of the game and two different DS's so that you could trade with yourself. That's a tall order for anyone, much less an eight-year-old. And even if you manage to complete the regional Pokedex, there's still another bigger step. The next step in completing a Pokemon game is that you have to complete the national Pokedex. This means catching one of every Pokemon that's ever been in any game at all. As of 2021, this means like 900 and something Pokemon, give or take. 
and all 900 Pokemon don't even appear in every game. So the only way to complete the National Pokedex is to literally bring your Pokemon up from your old games and transfer them to your new games. This means to complete the National Pokedex, you have to effectively complete every version of every Pokemon game ever. And if you do complete the National Pokedex, you can smile because you've beaten the odds and you have completed a Pokemon game. But unfortunately, there are Pokemon you will never catch. The mythical Pokemon. These bastard Pokemon were limited releases where you would literally have to take your Game Boy or whatever, go to a retail store like Toys R Us or GameStop, and they would give you a super secret special mythical Pokemon. This sucks for a lot of reasons, but the biggest one is that those events aren't happening anymore, and they were like years ago. If you can't go to the events, you can't get the mythical Pokemon. Without the mythical Pokemon, completing the national decks is simply impossible. And because of that, you will never complete a Pokemon game. They are forever incomplete. Or so I thought. In 2019, the newest Pokemon games, Sword and Shield, were finally released. I put an unhealthy amount of time into these games because catching and trading Pokemon was really easy thanks to the internet. Whether or not I enjoyed playing them and if I think they're good games is a different story. That's beside the point. With catching Pokemon becoming so much easier, I thought this was finally my chance to fulfill my dream and complete a Pokemon game by creating a living Pokedex. Having a living Pokedex means that I have one of every Pokemon that's ever been and I store them all in one place. The new Pokemon cloud storage system, Pokemon Home. This finally felt like my chance for redemption. I could finally heal these wounds and finally I could be complete. I was going to make a living Pokedex. With a fire in my belly, I made my plan, I organized my Pokemon, and I went into the wild area to start catching. I saw an onyx. I knew I needed one, so I walked up to the onyx to catch it, but I, I couldn't do it. Something came over me. I couldn't really figure out why, but this onyx, it it made me sick. This onyx wasn't Jason, it wasn't even a girl. It was just some imposter placeholder that just reminded me of what I lost. I wanted to run into my attic, dive into an old cardboard box, find my copy of Fire Red, boot it up, and see Jason waiting there for me, unchanged since 2004, but Jason's gone forever. I don't need a new ugly male onyx. I had an onyx and she was amazing. Catching these Pokemon didn't heal my wounds, it just reminded me of the Pokemon that I've left behind and the games that I've left incomplete. I have a few games from my past, but why should I play them if I know what waits for me at the end of the journey? Disappointment. I am incomplete and it's Pokemon's fault. It's like I've always had this dream that felt so wildly unattainable that any use worrying about it felt like a waste. This game and these monsters mean so much to me, and damn it, I want to catch them all. These lost, impossible games have left me incomplete for 24 years, forever searching for something that I could never have. But a few weeks ago, I decided that my search had to end. Before I die or am too old, I have to complete the living Pokedex. I have to heal these wounds, and I have to be complete. This is a story of redemption for Pokemon fans left forever incomplete with no one to play with. Redemption for the kids that realized that they would never get their favorite Pokemon because it had to be traded or was locked behind some event. I want every starter, every mythical, and every trade evolution that was just so elusive to me as a kid. I want to play through a Pokemon game and catch any and every Pokemon that I want. Today, I start that journey, and with your help, hopefully, I won't have to do it alone. My name is Wolf Duckworth, and this is The Living Pokedex, a redemption story. And where does any story start but the beginning?
If I was gonna complete this living Pokedex, I figured I would need four things. Number one, I need the hardware. I need two DS systems so that I can trade the Pokemon with myself and record the footage. Two, I needed the games. I needed 21 games so that I can get all the different Pokemon from all the different versions. Number three, I needed the mythical Pokemon. I needed to find a way to get these mythical Pokemon years after the events have ended. And four, well, the fourth thing I'm gonna save till the end. Getting four things doesn't seem too bad, but I quickly realized that this simple dream is becoming a very complicated and very expensive nightmare. Let's start with step one, the hardware. If I was going to do this, I knew I would need a second 3DS to trade with myself, which is depressing. This wasn't a big deal. I could just go buy another 3DS, but the biggest issue is getting that gameplay streamed and recorded. See, I'm not playing on an emulator. I'm playing on an actual DS, so I need to get the footage from this DS streamed to my computer. If this was a few years ago, I could just get a capture card installed, which is a modification that lets you see the screen of your DS on another screen. You would ship your console out, they would modify it with the capture card, then they would send it back to you for like 400 bucks, pretty easy. But a few years ago, the people that made and installed the capture cards, like just completely stopped. So I knew if I was gonna get one, I was gonna have to get it used. I scavenged the internet and found absolutely nothing. I mean, I desperately looked for a console. I was posting on forums, basically begging for leads, but nothing showed up. Several replies and messages reminded me that if I wanted a DS with a capture card, I should have bought one years ago. I even tried designing a permanent stand that would hold my DS and a camera so that I could just film the screen, but it was very uncomfortable and it just did not look good at all. And if I was gonna do this, I wanted to do it right. But after exhausting every option, it seemed like my journey was coming to an end before it even began. Or so I thought. A few weeks later, I was doing my daily 3DS search and right before I was about to slam my laptop closed and call it quits on this whole stupid dream, I found something. A listing for a new 3DS XL with the tested Mac compatible capture card pre-installed, the original box, and all the original documents. This was it. After weeks of searching, the thing I needed was right in front of me one click away. I was filled with excitement, but just as quickly as it came, it went because the 3DS was up for auction for five more days, had several bidders, and was already up to $1,025. Just too much money. Those five days passed and I sat on my couch completely defeated. I looked at the eBay listing and then I looked over at my pile of incomplete games and I thought about my journey. I thought about all the times I was so disappointed by these games. I thought about all the times I sat on the school bus and played Pokemon alone while the other kids made fun of me and they called me Pokemon Dork and Big Forehead. I thought about Jason, abandoned and cold, never finding her dad. I thought that if I don't at least try and get this 3DS, then that's just gonna be another opportunity for redemption that I'm gonna let pass me by. I couldn't let money stand between me and my living Pokedex. I grabbed my phone. I saw that there were only two minutes left in the auction. With my heart racing, I took a deep breath. I placed the bid and I won. Without really thinking, I'd spent $1,200 on a used 3DS. So that was something. But I was excited nonetheless. The console took a while to arrive, but what made that wait so much worse is I didn't know if it was really going to work on my Mac. I had to like dive into this all Japanese website to find the software. I figured that it was a virus, let alone that it would work, but I booted it up, I plugged it in, turned it on, and it worked. At that moment, step one was complete. I had the hardware. Next up was step two, the games. I already owned eight of the 21 games that I needed, but tracking down the remaining games was harder than I thought it was gonna be. 
What made the search so hard is that most of the games that you find online are not real Pokemon games. They're just like Chinese knockoffs. Those Chinese knockoffs won't work when trading with the real games, so I had to get the real ones. I completely gave up on eBay because they were way too expensive and it was hard to tell if they were real or fake, but I lucked out at a local thrift shop that had its own little section of DS games. There, I was able to get most of the games that I needed, but I still had to ensure that these games were real. When I took them home, some of them didn't really boot up, but after a quick cleaning and some testing, everything seems to be legit. And just like that, step two is complete. I had the games. Next up is step three, the mythical Pokemon. I told you earlier that the mythical Pokemon were locked behind events and there's no way to get them, which is true. But what I didn't tell you is that the Pokemon aren't gone forever. They're just stuck. See, those mythical Pokemon are still in the game. Those events just let you get them out. So, theoretically, if I was going to get the Pokemon out, I would have to go back in time, go to the event, get the Pokemon out, and come back. So if I'm going to get these mythical Pokemon, then I guess I need a time machine. Okay, not actually a time machine. Or is it? No, it's not. But I did find the next best thing. An action replay is a device that basically lets you cheat in video games. You put it in the DS, you tell it what you want it to do, and then like magic, pow, it does it. You can do this to get Pokemon, get unlimited items, and yes, even trigger events from the comfort of your own home. The Action Replay DSi, the yellow label one, not the cheaper one, the yellow label one, would be my ticket to unlocking these mythical Pokemon in the nine DS games. This wouldn't solve all of my mythical issues, but this is as close as I'm gonna get to an actual time machine. Because they use some super secret special cable, I had to order a new inbox version for $115, but I got it. I got it. I ordered another action replay for the 3DS games, and at that point, step three was complete. I had the mythicals. Now, before moving on to step four, I have to let you know that this journey will come to an end with the greatest reward of all. When you put a real living Dex into Pokemon Home, you are gifted a mythical Pokemon, but not just any mythical Pokemon. You are gifted the shiny Magearna, the ultimate reward for finishing this journey, the shiny mythical icing on this very, very expensive cake of redemption. I had three of the things that I needed, but the biggest, scariest, and least controllable thing that I needed is the fourth thing. People to come on the journey with me. I had to answer the question, will I be doing this alone? I've gathered a ton of TikTok followers over the past few weeks, and I've used it to try and boost my YouTube, my Discord, my Twitch, but I fear that this is going to get lost in the algorithm. This is something that I'm truly passionate about. and. I really want to do it live. I want to record and stream everything. I want to make reviews of all of the games and the generations. And I would love to do this with a crowd of people cheering me on like a Pokemon commercial from my childhood come to life. If you think this is a good idea, please like the video and consider subscribing. Follow me on Twitch and join the Discord. The links to all of that are in the description below. And all of those things are of no cost to you. I, I just don't want my journey to be alone like it has been for the past 24 years. Please consider sharing this with a friend and let me know if this is all worth it. Let's do this for redemption. Let's make my childhood heart happy knowing that one day I'm gonna complete this journey and one day I'm not gonna have to do it alone. Fly high, Jason. May she rest in peace.